Hello and welcome to Africa Today. I am Esther Amokwariola. Often seen holding a dry stick over the shoulders with a faded hat on the head and sometimes with a dagger stuck to the waist, herdsmen guiding their cattle in search of greener pastures are a common sight not just in Nigeria but across Africa. But in recent years, that easy-going nature attributed to the group now looks to be in the past as recurring killings in the country are now credited to the suspected nomadic cattlemen who go outside their trade to kidnap, kill and destroy. And so we ask, what are your thoughts on the recent massacre by herdsmen in the community in Plateau State, North Central Nigeria? You can join the conversation and share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC News NG. We take a report now and Africa Today will continue. Welcome on board. The role played by the Hausa communities during and after the attack is highly commended, says an eyewitness. The, the actual people. figure of dead people, apart from people that we've not even known their whereabouts, is 213. Where we did that uh, uh, mass massive burial was 67. If you go to Gindea Kwati, we have 37. If you go to uh, uh, Ruku, we have, 30, we have 42. Uh, uh, at Shonong, we have a 11. One of the surviving victims who lost 14 members of his family, including wife and two kids, narrated his ordeal to us. He bought my mother, my other sister, my wife with two kids, my other brother's wife with two kids, I three kids with other people inside. So we are helpless. And I can identify people. In fact, they are my neighbors. We are living very close by. Among them, we have Babangida Shadai. When the incidents happen, they kill many people in our village. The number of people that they kill in our village are 71 people. Even when the leadership of the Birom Youth Molders Association no had earlier accused the Joint Special Task Force of giving protection to some Fulani herdsmen following the declaration of the curfew by the state government. Uh, uh, vigilante in Haipan to be precise, you know, as at about uh, 2 a.m., you know, uh, uh, made a distress call that uh, an influx of herdsmen being accompanied by Nigerian military were moving from uh, Bisichi to FAS. Bisichi is under uh, Barikila, the local government. Whereas FAS is, an, is, is, is another settlement of Fulani hatemen under Joel community in Uriom, local government. So they were moving as at that hour. In short, it dawned on us that could it be that uh, 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 you know, military are actually colluding with these people even when a declaration of, you know, curfew has been officially made known to every individual. We spoke to the police public relations officer in the state, Matthias Chopev, on the number of those who lost their lives. But the details given to us by eyewitnesses seem different. The time I gave the figure as uh, 11 people, uh, that was the figure we got from the divisional police officer who was on ground. And uh, we discovered in the evening that the number uh, was not uh, 11, as earlier said, but the number is um, 86 persons. 86 persons lost their lives. Six people were injured. 50 houses burned. Residents have been advised to remain calm and allow security operatives to get to the root of the matter. Funom Joshua, TVC News. Joss. In what has become a usual reaction, fingers are being pointed at armed bandits in the form of herdsmen who have been terrorizing Nigeria's middle belt since 2001, with cases also reported in the southern part of the country. The latest attacks in Plateau State took place in 11 villages extending three, through, uh, through three local government areas where more than 50 houses were razed down in places like Barkin Ladi, Riom and Jos South. Joining me in the studio on Africa today, I have Dr. Isua Dogo, a political scientist and social commentator, 
And on phone, I'll have our correspondent, Funam Joshua, from Plateau State. And later on the show, I'll be having Mohammed Nuru Abdullah, chairman, Mayeti Allah Cattle Breeders Association in Plateau State. Good to have you all on the program. Now let's begin with uh, Joshua, correspondent from Plateau State. Joshua, if you can hear me, give us an, a, situation, a situation report of what's on the ground at the moment. Okay, here in just precisely the city metropolis and some of the, you know, the other two local government that are under the curfew, you know, right now everybody is inside his own house, like from 6 o'clock everybody has to leave the streets, go back to your house, so it's just more of quietness in this part of the state, but however, you know, uh, there are some, there are tensions in, in, in places, in, in places like Berkeley, the communities in Berkeley and Riom, you know, simply because these two, I mean, these few days after the, the attack, you know, virtually every day you hear, you know, threats, you know, rumors of threats, rumors of threats from, from the killer hardsmen, you know, the rumors keep circulating. So the villagers are always, you know, living, you know, they're always scared of, you know, of, of unknown attack because you might not really know where it's coming. But, you know, here where we are at, at the city metropolis is, is, is relatively calm mm. compared to the to the suburb part of the streets, like. So, what, so, so what's the, the level of this, security so, presence for them? No, there is, there is, you know, the, the security operatives, you know, are virtually everywhere, you know, in the town. We saw them even this, this evening. I just, I just, I just moved within the, 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 the old airport part of the town. The security, there's just the security operatives that you see with their vehicles, you know, moving around the town. There are plenty of them that were deployed from Abuja and some other you know, neighboring state. All right. So the presence of security operatives here is, is, is really encouraging. All right, Fudom, thank you very much for the updates so far from Jaws Plateau State. Now, let me come to you now, Do Isu, Dr. Isu Adogo. We've just heard our correspondent giving us an updates of what is on ground in Plateau State. But before now, we know that this uh, clash, if I would call it, or this unrest in the Middle Belt has been continuous it isn't the first time we get to see massacre and killings in the Middle Belt and in the North. Now, the scale at which it is taken now, it's what's given so many to worry. It has been termed a massacre. It has been termed a genocide, different from the term people had called it over the time as uh, farmers, herdsmen, farmers, uh, herdsmen clashes. What are your thoughts on what is happening in the Middle Belt and other parts of the northern part of the country? I'm so filled with grief that I was almost tempted not to come here. Reason being that the Middle Belt, there is a deliberate plan to annihilate, to destroy, to ensure that not a single living human being exists in the Middle Belt. Do you have facts to back your claim? I don't need facts. The facts are everywhere. And what kind there of facts do you have? Because those who are doing the killings are no Fulani herdsmen. There is a plan, a deliberate, deliberate plan to kill every single human being in the Middle Belt. And the authorities know it. These so-called flanning herdsmen that we have lived with for ages, who use their sticks, when did they start using AK-47 and AK-49? A cow that they sell for 50 and they will take 300,000 or sell six cows to buy an AK-47? It doesn't exist in the dictionary of an ordinary flanny man. And the typical local flanny men are still there. And so the terrorism and the jihadists are different from the normal local Flani people that carry sticks. All right, I Do understand. you know that a 
military man cannot just even operate an AK-47, not to talk of a flooding man. So where do they get the training? All right, I understand I have, the, we have Mohammed Nuru Abdullah. I'm sorry for holding your thoughts. Now we have Mohammed Nuru Abdullah. He is the chairman of Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association in Plateau State. Good to have you with us on the program at this time. So now this issue has, you know, evening. given different colorations. What are your thoughts on what is happening in the Middle Belt? Yes, uh, uh, in my own thoughts, it is a well-planned orchestration of this dastardly act in the Middle Belt of Nigeria. We have facts and figures to show at any length that this heinous act are being well-planned and perpetrated by people who have some agenda hidden in their minds. And what kind of agenda could that be? Uh, these are uh, agendas of, of removing or, 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 or dividing the Nigeria into segments. Some people believe that Nigeria one day will, be, will not be a Nigeria. And if you see the north, is the majority of the northern part of Nigeria are inhabited by Muslims and um, uh, communities, more especially the northeast, the northwest. Therefore, the north central Christians mostly dominated the area and now are resorting to cleansing the Muslim communities in these areas so that they will, they will, they will have their own sense of belonging if Nigeria is going to divide itself. I have a reasons that I will show. In several statements accredited to some personalities in Nigeria have shown this. For instance, the recent uh, 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 lecture given by the former defense minister, Theophilus Danjuma, in Taraba University, where he, he, he called on all the Middle Belt people to, to resort to buying rifles, AK-47, to defend themselves. He didn't come out to say buy an AK-47. He said but Nigerians should, should defend should themselves here. Yeah. And defend themselves. He said defend, not, but not take up rifles. I have to correct that okay. on air. Okay, why didn't he, uh, as a defense minister, a former defense minister, and a stakeholder in the country, why should he ask the, the inhabitants to defend themselves? He could have emphasized that government should do everything possible to defend its citizens. Not citizens defending themselves. One, that is one. Okay. When they are about burying those caskets buried in Benue, claiming that Fulani killed 73 persons in Benue last time, Jerry Gana was on the pulpit telling them if they are not ready, they should be ready. He is there to be their commander and they, they should fight this Fulani husband. And let me give you these scenarios. Benue State was on, in a chaos, killings everywhere. But let me tell you, let me bring you back. Have you had these killings just recently? Everything has come down in Benue State. There are no more killings because of what reasons? Because the orchestrators of these killings have been arrested and been detained. The Anita Shaku and his men. All right, let, let me hold your thought for now because we need to go on a very quick break. Uh, we need to go on a quick break right now. Mohammed Nuru, Nuru, we will come back with more discussions on this matter. You're watching Africa Today and we'll be looking at the recent massacre by herdsmen in community in Plateau State, North Central Nigeria. The Plasu massacre has become an inherent concern with President Muhammad Buhari recently embarking on an emergency visit to commiserate with the victims and engage relevant stakeholders in achieving sustainable peace. State governments slammed a dusk to dawn curfew in the affected local governments, a step which in the past seemed not to have helped to curtail 
the massacres. Now, Mr. Nuhu, you were saying something, Mr. Nuru, rather, you were saying something before when on big re regarding to the issues on ground that it's more of a communal clashes. But let me quickly ask you this question here. My guess in the studio believe it is more of a, uh, if you like, call it a systematic, you know, action or ploy to decimate a particular sect of the country. What are your thoughts on this perceived notion yeah, that seems I'll, to be, you know, I'll, going I'll, around I'll from co different corners? I've seen this, this conflict in the, most especially in the North Central Nigeria and some other states like Taraba and so on and so forth, is a well-planned orchestration of killings that to kill all the Muslim community, especially the Fulani community, who are, who are known to be everywhere in this North Central, that they must be out of these areas. Let me give you a scenario. Former governor of Plato State, Jonah David Jang, held a meeting on June 2010 at his residence, where he, he held a meeting with other stakeholders about 15 of, the, of them. And then they prefer solution to Biram problems. They call it Biram nation problems. On it, item X, stated as follow. The Fulanis whom our forefathers gave our land free of charge raising, their animals have suddenly turned to bite the finger that feed them. And on, on the position number six, stated as follow. The Fulanis must be taught a bitter lesson of their lives. Secondly, on the 10th, uh, on, Feb on February 25th, 2010, in an interview with, with, with Big Daily Trust newspaper, Jang said, and I, I, I quote, I am a retired soldier who is ready to fight to the last drop of my blood. All right. Not, not, not the end. All right. If you go to a website, let me give you a website. All right, let, let, let's you hold your thought for now because we still have uh, Mr. Dogo I Isua with us in the studio. Dr. Dogo Isua, I beg your pardon. Dr. Dogo, from what he's just said, clearly he, he believes it's more uh, someone is, a group of people are on a mission. But if the government seems to be sincere in tackling this uh, problem that is getting out of hand, what ways do you think they aren't doing rightly so that we can... We can you know, contain this as soon as we can and not allow it to degenerate into a situation that we cannot control? Well, before I comment on that aspect, I can say the last speaker is simply ignorant of what is taking place because you don't have clashes. You have people that are being killed. They are running and they are following them and killing them. You say there's clash. There's no clash now. If you say clash, you will also say that the extermination of the Jews was a clash between the Germans and the Jews when six million were exterminated. That is exactly what is happening. Is that a clash? Is that what you call a clash? Where are the Fulanis that have been killed? How many of them? Where are their numbers? Where were they buried? How much nobody knew about those people being exterminated? Only him that knows. And if there is anybody in the Middle Belt today that is living with a local Fulani man, the same scenario existed ages ago. They are still friends and friends. So these terrorists, these mercenaries, people like this person that has just spoken, are the people causing the problem. No, I, they are the sponsors of the terrorists. Dr. They are Adu, the people Dr. that Isua, should I have not to, be allowed I have to, to go interrupt free. there. I'm I so sorry. You can interrupt I have to interrupt you because see, you don't have to people, go that, that I am level. I the National Publicity Secretary of the Middle Belt, and we know exactly what is happening, and what Dr. Uh, General Danjuma said was absolutely correct, and I will corroborate that with this story. On the 24th of December, 2016, I, we watched about f 15 trucks, 15 ammo tanks that passed, almost 35 uh, trucks of soldiers and policemen that passed to the Kafanchan. There was 24-hour curfew, and that same night, they were doing an orgy of killing in Kafanchan. The governor of Kaduna State locked up the hospital. So what for do you want the government to do at this Why point? Why shouldn't because I that, comment on this? Yeah, we can comment on this because right now we, everyone is, is the paying. Government, no one is happy the, with what is going on right now. When you talk of the government, so what, I will talk of the security intelligence uh, 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 community. Right. What happens, in my view, intelligence 
presupposes that you are proactive, not reactive. When hundreds of people are killed, then they say soldiers and policemen. And you heard that young man who said that in 11 a.m. they saw soldiers escorting so-called cows. So what's the it? way forward, Dr. Isua? The way forward, are you getting me? Yes. Is that the government should be sincere. Because my belief is that these people are not ordinary flanny man, men. They are the same Boko Haram that have been released. And why? Uh, and I believe in that. People can have their differences, but I have stood on this for since 2011, and I'm not going to change my mind. There is a theory of conspiracy. The terrorists key into the idea of being flanny, and they are killing people. The mercenaries, the sponsors are there. They supply them with arms, and they go, they kill, we are running. They are killing us, we are running. And somebody will say flanny, a uh, farmer's uh, clash. If the farmers go to their farms, they kill them, nobody returns, and you say, so tell me, there are just three aspects to me that okay. you can't ensure mm. you know what is happening. The security agencies cannot cut off their source of funding. They can't cut off their source of supply of arms. They can't cut off the source how they get into Nigeria. If they are from Mali or any place that the president said, can we say that the security agencies cannot do that? If they can't, then they are suffering from professional or intellectual laziness. All right, let me quickly turn to Mohamed Nuru now. Mohamed, yeah, if you were to take this you. home now, what would you proffer as the best solution to this problem? Thank you very much. He is, he is saying that uh, where do we bury, bury our corpses? Number one, can he tell me what happened in Sabdauna of Taraba State and the, the massacre of Fulani Hartsmen? Over, over, over 800 people were buried in one single day. Number two, in Numan, what happened to children on the age of less than 10 ages? We are buried, about 60, 63 of them were buried for no reason. So what's the in way, Tarantos, what's the way forward, Mr. Mohamed Nuru? What's the way forward? People were buried in their numbers in their very large numbers. People are crying in just here. We bury more than 700 people in one single day. And he is ignorant of this, this fact. And he is telling me rubbish. No, we understand your passion about this matter, but we need a way forward. Why we need a solution to this. Decide. I'm sorry I have to interrupt you, Dr. Dugo. We need a way forward, my love. What, what would you proffer as the best solution to this problem? Let me proffer solutions. Right. Now I'm on solutions. Hello? These highly placed personalities that are shadows right. sponsoring these killings should be arrested and then do it accordingly. Anybody who cannot control his mouth and say rubbish and, uh, 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 and stimulate this fighting and uh, be a trigger to these killings must be arrested and be dealt with accordingly. Secondly, government should use a stick and carrot approach to this situation. Because the Fulani men don't own a media, that is why they are propagating against us, telling the world, I have a document where some youth, Christian youth from the north are saying that, yes, let's fight them. Today we are on the media and we are propagating our, our propagandas and the world is listening to us. So let's continue. So let them continue. I have facts and figures to show at any length. I, how I wish I could have been talking so much Mm. Now, if you look at the map of the Middle Belt, why are the Middle Belt comprising Taraba, Adamawa, Gomchi, Gombe, North and mm. uh, Southern Borno, Southern Yobe, Southern Kenti, right. and so on and so forth? All right, uh, Mohammed Nuru Abdullah. We thank you very much. Chairman Miete Ala Cattle Breeders Association in Plateau State. We we'll appreciate your analysis and contribution on Africa today and also like to thank my guests in the studio Dr. Isua Dogo, political much. scientist of I've not even a said national anything. publicity secretary well we can't continue because of time we appreciate all you've contributed so far on no, the show it's we, a pleasure we are here to tell the story we of how the middle belt is being annihilated we are, and we, are, we have not even told it i'm so sorry we cannot Across continue, the we whole can't middle continue belt. anymore we can't continue anymore because of I time think we will do this another time, perhaps. Thank you very much for your time with us <sighs> on the show. Thank you. Now, although conflicts between herdsmen and rural communities are far from new, putting a stop to the ugly trend is possible if leaders 
use every available opportunity to admonish dear people of the importance and necessity for peaceful coexistence. In the meantime, state authorities must rise to the occasion of effectively securing lives and property, ensuring that nomadic mercenaries don't turn out to become the nation's next worst nightmare. Well, that is our package for today, but don't forget to join the conversation as usual on Twitter at TVC News NG and also follow me for updates around Africa at Esther TVC News. On to the next one, I am Esther Amapariola and always remember, Africa can only get better.